Charles Lamana is the Corporate Vice President for Business Applications and Platforms. He has a unique vantage point for what's ahead for technology. Gone are the days of little silos and stovepipe solutions. The future is this tangled mess. And how IT should organize for it. That is the culture and mental shift that will define success for companies moving forward. And what each of us should do to get ready. I believe that the future expert and the future transformation will happen from people that do and understand both of those things. Charles shares the guidance normally reserved for the top CIOs today on PowerCAD Live. Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Toppers with the PowerCat team, and today we're here with Charles Lamana, Corporate Vice President of Business Applications and Platforms. Hey, Charles. Hey, Phil. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. I, I, I'm very, very glad that I finally got the call to join you guys at one of my favorite shows. Well, you know, if you want to be on daily, we can probably make that happen, too. Sounds good. And normally on these episodes, we talk with your broad team about technology and technology they're releasing. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about technology, but how it affects IT leaders. So first, you know, you talk with CIOs from companies of all sizes all around the world. What are the things you hear IT leaders saying are their challenges in delivering value? Yeah, I would say there's probably two main things that I hear all the time. The first is this big desire to do more with less. Everybody has this huge backlog of sure, tasks right like now. apps and automations and data analysis and things like that. And they never have enough time or budget or people to go do it. So every CIO is trying to figure out how can I go deliver on this level of ambition with this level of resources. So uh, that's one piece. And the second thing is agility. I mean, we live in this world where things change so quickly. Um, and if you think yeah. about something that changes on the edge of the business, that cascades to tons of changes inside of the IT department. And being able to quickly on a weekly or monthly or quarterly basis reprioritize, reevaluate, and in some cases rebuild um, is just essential to really being competitive this day and age. So do more with less and be super flexible and super agile. So not an easy combination to deal with for sure. Now you talked about how quickly things change. Every month or every week or it seems daily, these roadmaps are more tightly integrating. Microsoft 365 and Power Platform, of yep. course, are tightly integrated. Viva Sales, Conversational Intelligence, Synapse, Purview, and tighter Azure integration. What's on the horizon for this type of deep roadmap integration? Yeah, I, I think what we're starting to see with a lot of these product integrations is the reality that a typical IT landscape is super heterogeneous and requires collaboration and coordination across all the different parts of a typical IT department. You need your architects, you need your data experts, your data engineers, your BI experts, your app developers, your AI experts. They all have to work together to actually build the solutions that the business needs and craves. And we're just responding to that on the Microsoft side by making it easy and effortless to go between say Power BI and Power Apps or Power Apps and Power Automate or to drop down into Azure as needed or to go deliver your solutions through Teams as needed. So. I would say this need to, to compose and interoperate between all these different technologies, some from Microsoft and some not from Microsoft, that's why we have the 800 plus data connectors for the Power Platform, is really critical to building solutions that actually move the business forward. And if I were to say anything, from like 2000 to, to 2022, the biggest shift in IT is you're gone are the days of little silos and stovepipe solutions. The future is this tangled mess <laughs> of all these different things together. Um, so so I think that's a big thing that you see in what we're doing with the products and the guidance we provide and the implementation and projects that our customers are doing, um, where they really need to go kind of maybe untangle it and bring a little bit of order of these things together. So let's talk about that tangled mess. A lot of the customers we talk with in PowerCat are large enterprises. Their IT organizations are often focused around service lines, uh, Microsoft 365, Identity, ERP, or teams supporting legacy systems or other service lines. If you were the CIO at one of our customers and you could have a fresh slate, how would you organize for this situation you've described? Yeah, so I think the one, one of the biggest things I would focus on is first, is like, what, how are you transforming the business you support? And that may vary from industry to industry. Like the way, say uh, a banking, one of our customers who's in banking or financial services, is focused on engaging the customer is different than the way a manufacturer or say an energy company is going to engage their customers. So 
The first piece is be very mindful of the business you support and what the priorities are in terms of how they actually use digital technology. The second thing is I would increasingly mix technology teams together to be aligned around solutions they build as opposed to the technology they use. And the great example of where we see this is like we talk about this with many of our customers, this idea of bringing together the power platform center of excellence to be a group which does apps and automation and BI and chat experiences and websites, and, and also a good way to drop into pro dev like in something like Azure or elsewhere. So I would say aligning less around technology boundaries and more around solutions that actually get built. And then the third piece I would say is really embracing this idea that every company is going to have to have a technology angle to it. There is no company where you don't need to have a strong technology focus, which means it's not just taking apps off the shelf and using them. It's taking apps off the shelf and integrating them and building on top of them and composing them, which means viewing less of things like a CRM or an ERP as an island and more instead as a component as part of your bigger app or estate. So it's kind of a, a complicated and it's even a tangled answer there, but to really maybe just put a finer point on it, it's this idea that you want to build IT organizations that are business aligned and business enabled and that are not so dogmatic about where technology boundaries are um, to go further where the company is actually trying to go do. And that business aligned focus is probably a new set of skills. So if you were the CIO of this fictional, let's call it Lamana Industries, what would you look for for people joining your team? One of the things I talk about all the time with customers is CIO is not someone who just operates things you buy off the shelf. CIO is someone that needs to help you transform and innovate. Or is it someone who uses IT and technologies as something that can actually propel the business forward to go make it be the kind of the next generation and survive for decades to come? And that's what I would look for from a CIO point of view. And then if I were to go look very little more narrower, is I would increasingly look for people who have both technical skills, but also business understanding. And that's why we are so excited about the power platform in this domain, because this blending of business expertise and technical ability is going to be increasingly important as we move into the future. And that's a, that's kind of the two things I would look for, a CIO that really looks at technology as an enabler and a transformer, not just something that happens in the background, and a team that's full of people who understand technology, but just as importantly, understand the business needs and business challenges. So paint the picture then one or two years out for organizations that have succeeded in making this transformation. What does it look like and what does IT's impact on the business look like? Yeah, I would say like that, that's a future where uh, people view IT as not something on the side, but something that's baked in to every part of the business. And that is what I think real success will look like. And if we talk about sayings like software is eating the world or you know every industry is being disrupted by technology those are just companies that were born with technology at its center and every company has to go through this transformation where technology becomes at the center of every part of their business or someone will enter their market and do that and what we do at microsoft and what we're super excited about with power platform and dynamics and a whole bunch of other great technology is we're a great partner to help any company go through that transformation to go through that journey and make it to the other side stronger and better than they were in the past and to make sure that they're the ones doing the disruption of their industry and their domain instead of some other company which was born technology for first or born in the cloud or something like that. So then coming back to today for, for painting this two year out vision, what one thing do you recommend IT leaders do today to get started? I mean, I, I wouldn't be a, a good citizen of, of this uh, show if I didn't say, of course, you have to adopt the power platform. <laughs> so, but That's right. I mean, That's power right. platform is the best tool in the world to, to go <laughs> up with this transformation. But I mean, the, like, the biggest thing that I, we work with, and this is power platform and lots of other Microsoft technology, but the biggest shift is got to get out of the mindset that technology is something you protect and guard and only keep in IT. Technology is something that you need to go help enable and push to the entire company. And Power Platform is an example where we have a tool which allows IT and business to collaborate on a single platform to build amazing digital solutions. Now, there will be other technologies and other things where the same type of trend will happen. And this is a little nervous territory because every CIO I talk to also says, oh my gosh, how do I secure it? How do I govern it? How do I make sure that 
when I empower the business, I don't lose control. Well, sometimes to keep control, you got to give up control. <laughs> you know, you got to embrace it and make sure it's an environment where people can create and businesses involved, but it's an environment that you make sure is safe and secure. So I would say this mindset shift of IT from gatekeepers and owning all digital to instead digital being under the ownership of the entire company with IT as its enablers, that is the culture and mental shift that will define success for companies moving forward. Because I guarantee you in every technology first company like an Amazon or an Uber or a Tesla, technology is owned by every employee. And of course, it's ultimately the people in the organization that make all of this happen. So for anybody watching right now, what is the one thing they should do to get prepared for this? I would say that the, the biggest thing really to kind of, um, kind of get engaged on it is adapt that mindset of its business process, business mindset and technology together. And if you know a lot about technology, go spend some more time getting familiar with the business and the business processes you support. If you know a lot about business process, spend a little bit more time in technology. I believe that the future expert and the future transformation will happen from people that do and understand both of those things at the same time and bring skills from both of those things to build the most compelling possible value proposition. Um, and that, that's what the future will hold. And that's the future skill set you want to go build. And it's different for everybody. But go ask yourself, which of the two do you need to work on and go work on it. And of course, we've seen it transform careers over and over again. Thanks for being here today, Charles. Of course, thanks for having me. And hopefully uh, the session was, was useful and helped some folks on that journey on what it looks like to become technology first. And thank you, Phil, for, for doing all of these sessions. Uh, I know they do a lot and they mean a lot to the community. So just want to express my gratitude for that as well. And thanks for everybody that listened in. Thanks. Mm -hmm.